All right, welcome to the Feedback Podcast, everybody. My name is Back. Thank you for tuning in. Really appreciate y'all. A couple of announcements. Uh, one, go to the YouTube channel. You'll see faces of the people I've been talking to. Very funny. Uh, go to the archive. I'm trying to think what I had recently. Uh, Gabe Davis came back. We nice. talked about the uh, most annoying people in the club. Uh, I had... Um, oh, Chris Castle. We talked about worst drivers. That shit was hilarious. Oh, yeah. Uh, Godfrey was uh, was on the podcast as well. That was really cool. Uh, good to see the dude. Very funny. Make sure you follow all the people that I've had on this podcast. Uh, there's a lot of funny people in town. Support local live comedy. Uh, second announcement. Record Play Live returns on Sunday, April 30th. We're, we're back at the Pershing on the east side. So uh, Fifth and Penn and Alice area. Uh, the theme is the 2000s edition, hip-hop and R&B, so music trivia show, as you know or you don't know. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, we got the crew back together, DJ K. Cali, We got Woody DeVino, myself, uh, Rochelle McConaughey will be doing the halftime comedy show. Uh, so, yeah, good times. We got new challenges as well, so brush up on your 2000s hip-hop. So <laughs> your Beyonce, your Ja Rule, your 50 Cent, your... You know, Ludacris, Lil John, like that whole that whole decade. So it'll be a good time. So make sure you go to Record Play Live slash tickets to get your tickets. They've been going, so uh, don't miss out. Uh, so make sure you go uh, Record Play Live slash tickets to get your tickets. We got some uh, VIP for two two people, some lounges for four people left, a few. Uh, but yeah, it'll be a good time. So Sunday. April 30th at the Pershing uh, record play live 2000s hip hop and R&B edition. Don't miss out. All right. Now I'm very excited about my guest today. <laughs> I really am. I really am because like he's, he's one of those cats that like I've seen around many, many times, but I, yeah. I think we've only talked once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. but I'm like, I gotta know. I gotta, I gotta meet this dude. So I'm, I'm really glad it's a long time coming. I got Pastor Royce in my in my building. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. Doing good. Uh, but excited to hear about the the, the early 2000s hip hop trivia show. That's like that. I'm Rain Man with that shit. Like, that's oh, like, really? Yeah, it's because like I grew up in you know Texas, early 2000s, perfect age for it. It was like a huge hip hop head, and just yeah, all, all that early 2000s stuff. Like that's still my blood type. Though. Yo, I had this. Con- <laughs> I've had this conversation with a uh, with a bunch of people. Like, what was the best decade in music? Most people would say, "What?" This is what I've heard. The, the, they always say the 70s. Yeah. The 70s, you got the funk, you got the disco, yeah. you got the early, you know, you got uh, you got the soul. There's a lot because the 70s was a very crazy decade. Yeah. So that when a country is in crisis, that's usually when the best music comes out. Yeah, exa- yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> so when the country's fucked up, we'll make the, be- yeah. <laughs> make the best art. <laughs> but then the 2000s, to me, was, was like the culmination of 70s, 80s, 90s. Yeah. Cause, and then it went to shit after that. Yeah, twenty ten was shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I like. I mean, I, I came. Uh, I graduated oh three, and like I from college. I, uh, no, 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 from uh, high school. Oh, uh, never. <laughs> not that old. Yeah, yeah. Never made it to college, but uh, I fucking. I, I grew up in clean. I used to be a rapper. That was like what I initially thought I was gonna do. Oh shit! Okay. With my entire life, I was like, yeah, I was doing mixtapes and shit. Like that was my grind. And so I was a you know huge hip hop head. I loved it. I I remember like. I think what I love most about that, I can't speak for music in general, but specifically about hip hop in that era, and that kind of changed when the 2010s came, was that it used to be like I was a huge fan of like localized hip hop, regional sounds. Right. Like I love Southern stuff, but what kind of stood me out where I grew up at Clean, I was like one of the only cats that listened to actual, like, uh, I love like lyric heavy New York shit, yeah. which didn't fly in Texas. It'd be like, maybe, maybe a little dip set, whatever Jay Z's radio song was. Right, right, but right. But I was like, yo, Dudes hung out at trap houses and shit. They were not bumping like you know, like like lyrical, miracle, dear. Like it was, you know, it was like you know, switch a house or turn it off. It was essentially right. It's like yeah, you, you, yeah. you get banned. <laughs> but yeah, it's like but that that because the Texas had its own sound back then. What that made, like sparked a fascination. I loved thinking about like oh, what does you know music from this this part of the country sound like, or what would it sound like from here? And so I remember I would like be going through the source and it would have the unsigned hype shit. It'd be like somebody from. Rhode Island. I'm like, I don't know what that sounds like. Or there was this dude, Joker the Bail Bondsman from Anchorage, Alaska. And I was like, yep. what would rap from there sound like? And I, that sparked my interest. But then, like, around the 2010s, because the internet, everything got real big, everything kind of started to sound the same no matter where the fuck you went. It all kind of sounded Southern because it rode that Southern wave in the yep. late 2000s. And that the sound. Yeah, the trap shit. And, and it turned into, the, you know, it's like the roots what we listen to now. 
but it like the sound melded to where like you could hear somebody from LA and like that dude could be from Houston, that guy could be from Miami. Obviously, they still have the regional things like Miami's got the club shit, but yeah, it was essentially it was like it kind of took that local flavor off of it, which I miss. Well, it 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 became a formula. Yeah, after the 2010s, because people were getting the game, not necessarily for the music, but for the clout or yep. for the for the money. And so, but 2000, the reason why I really liked the 2000s is because there was something for everybody. Yeah. If you were into R&B, there was R- dope R&B at the time. If you wanted R&B rap, Ja Rule had that shit yeah, locked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? If Probably you wa- the golden age of that Jar R&B rap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody <laughs> did it. They all, Nas did it, yeah, GMX yeah, did it, they yeah. all did it. Uh, if you wanted the, some underground shit, like from the little brother, the dilated people, yeah, yeah. the arsonists, yeah. like that was booming too at the time. Yeah. So that's what I mean by... It, there was such a variety in sound in the 2000s. Neptunes, you had a Neptune sound. Yep. You had a, a Timbaland, Timbaland sound. Yeah, you yeah. had a Dre sound Manny, that was still Manny around. Press sound. The Manny yeah, Press yeah. sound. There was plenty to go around. So yeah. it, forever. It, didn't, it didn't even have to be a fan. You just knew it was out there. Yeah, yeah. And in the 2010s, it all just like collapsed on itself and started going, no, nah, we're going to do one sound that everybody likes, yeah. and, and that's it. And there was no more uniqueness. There's yeah. no more, like, it was all, yeah, just crank as many, sh- you know, songs yeah. as you can to be relevant. We, 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 it's like we hacked our own algorithm. Pretty much. And it's, it's like, and we enjoy what's coming out. I mean, it's like, this shit still knocks. I mean, it's, it's got a, it's, it's all producer's game anyways. Like, the right. beat hits, it hits. But, like, I remember right around the time when, like, uh, like, trap and drill shit was really popping off. I just moved to Austin. I was living with a couple of homies of mine. They were all big, you know, we all some rap music. Uh-huh. And my boy Jared, he's a dude from Houston, he... He felt heavy with like, as he called, he's like, you know, ignorant ass music. Cause I love that, you know, just like drill shit, trap shit, uh, Chief Keef, you know, okay. what I'm like, like that whole genre. And I remember that was like when it was first coming out, and I liked it. It's good. Like if I walk into a party and I'm drunk and like that's on, it's like obviously you're gonna have a good time. Mm-hmm. But like I would never get into like agree with me. I was like, it's kind of trash. And we finally came to an agreement. I was like, you have to agree with me. That takes very little effort on the part. You get the hot beat. You know, what I'm saying like the, it, there's not a lot of like. I, I didn't want to say like an old man yelling at a cloud, but I was like, one thing I had, I was like, you got to agree with me. That doesn't take a lot of effort. You could crank out that 23 song album in like a week. <laughs> yes, but yes, because they didn't, there wasn't much, and this is going to sound dismissing, but there was in the production value, it was very simple. It got yeah. dark, like yeah, mostly yeah. baseline kind of, kind of yep. beats, right? Where there's, there's not much melody. And then it's not lyrically, it's not even on the level, but it's okay. It has its place. I'm yeah. not knocking that down. Yeah. My, my beef with what came in the 2010s and after is that they they figured out what sells and they just kept feeding that. Yeah. And I'm like, as an artist, why would the fuck would you want to sound like someone else? Yeah, yeah. Whereas yeah. before that, God forbid... You would sound like another <laughs> yeah, rapper. Yeah, 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 that was a big deal. It's like you jack my flow, you jack my style, and like if anybody accuses somebody of that these days, they all have to look at themselves. It's like, well, y'all are all, y'all all jack Little Wayne style essentially. Pretty, like, yeah, pretty much. If you, if you get down to like the grandfather notes of it, like you could listen to a song, you'd be like, okay, yeah, that's that's Busta Rhyme. Didn't sound like Snoop. Didn't sound yeah. like DMX. Didn't sound like Wu Tang. Didn't sound like Mob. Didn't sound like Ja Rule. Didn't sound like Fifty. Yeah. Didn't so sound like missy so everybody had their own thing yeah and now it was like oh we got to keep these kids attention up so we got to crank as many songs as possible to stay relevant so the production value goes down you got soundcloud coming up and everything yeah and so now it's like who cares about albums who cares about the art form yeah it's just let's get a song out dumb it down so kids can listen to it and can rap along yeah put a dance to it if you can yeah 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 and then Put it out. Yeah. And then do another one two months later. Cause, yeah. Because Panda Panda is gone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Panda Panda. Yeah. That, that, that motherfucker yeah. gone. Yeah, dude, yeah. No, nowhere. That's the thing. Is like, it, doesn't, it doesn't make the way for longevity. Like, you know, like, and one thing that was cool, you mentioned about everybody having their own different styles. When two rappers would collaborate, it was like a big deal. It was like, oh, what's that going to sound like? Exactly. And like, I already know what it's going to sound like. If you tell me, like, hey, NBA Young Boy, a little dirt to the song, I'm like, I know exactly what that song sounds like. I, I don't know what it sounds like, but I'm sure I can figure yeah, it out. Yeah, exactly. Is it like, it's like, yeah, I'm going to hum on a hum on a hum. Yeah. They're like, okay, whatever, hum on a hum on a hum. So I wanted to dig, dig a little bit because, again, this is probably the second time I've seen Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I, 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 the first time I saw you, I think it was FPIA. Word. I think it was FPIA. Was it? Because uh, I was a judge. 
2017 and 2018. Oh, word. Okay, yeah. Let's talk about that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but I think that was the the first time that that I I mean I've I've seen you around yeah. even, even back then. But like, um, how, how long you been doing? I've been doing comedy like 13 years now. Consistently. Yeah. Consistently. That, that's like, a huge. Yeah, breakneck pace since I hit it. There was like years there, like in my 20s, where like I realized I was like. I was trying to get on the road. I wasn't taking shit seriously. But, like, yeah, I've been kind of hitting it pretty hard. I mean, I'm, I'm lucky enough it's my full-time job now. But Oh, nice. Yeah, man. Like, I, I, like, I was, yeah, I've been doing it for a minute. I started when I was, like, 22. So, like, you know, or I, was, I started when I was 23. How old was I? 37? So, yeah, it's going up on 14 years. It's been 13 years coming up on 14. I started when I was, like, 22, 23, mm -hmm. real early. And like, You're I know, in Austin? But, uh, I, well, I started, yeah, technically I started in Austin. I grew up in Colleen, Texas, Colleen Coppers Cove. Right. And uh, I was in a band, and I used to rap. So I was on stage. And I was like, man, I really always want to try comedy. And I was always, I was a screamer in a hardcore band. And, I can tell. And, and, yeah, yeah. I can yeah, tell. Yeah. I got to look. You know what? I can hear you over my headphones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it did a number. Uh, but I did like, so I was doing that. And I, I liked being on stage. I was going to get a shot. So I, I ended up doing like old school Velveeta Room mics back in like, it was 2008. And that was like when uh, you had to call a phone number in the in the morning, and sign up for the open mic, uh -huh. and like you didn't know if you were got on or not. You just had to go down there and check, uh -huh. uh, which is insane. I started doing that maybe for like two or three months, and then I moved to Connecticut. And then I just, I, that, I was like, I'm moving up here to do comedy, moving to the East Coast. And now I look back, I'm like, Hartford, Connecticut isn't like the East Coast as far <laughs> as comedy is concerned. Like, and so I was like, fuck it, I went up there, I did that, and then yeah, but I got my technical start in Austin, like the first couple mics. But my real groundwork was the three years I was in the New England scene. Okay, who are your con uh, contemporaries uh, in Austin? In Austin, so when I moved here, I moved here three years in. I was I was already doing comedy for three years, and uh, when I got here, like Ryan County, Chris Tellez. Okay, uh, there was like the, the older cats at the time. Obviously, it was like Matt Beard and stuff like that. Lisa Friedrich is still around. Roxy Castillo. Uh, I was lucky enough to be there at the same time and become really good friends with Lashana Lester. Uh -huh. uh, she was like uh, she was already like yo. I remember top when by the time I, I showed I up. I remember Lashonda, yeah. Yeah, she was way cooler than me than she, had, than she was ever required to be, and like, I will always thank her for it. But mm -hmm. And, like, uh, I'm trying to think of cats that are still doing it in town. Uh, is Andrew Andrew Murphy was back then? Around? Andrew Murphy was one of those guys, yeah. yeah. I was here, like, maybe a year before he got here, and then it was, like, then we had, like, the Andrew the Andrew craze. There was a whole bunch the of Andrew. Wagner and all them? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> those guys, that was, that was, I don't even for a while, but that was, like, Andrew Dismukes, who's on SNL now and shit. Like, but oh. I would say contemporaries when I started, people that are still doing it, the list is kind of short, but Chris Tellez is for sure one of them. Kath Barbadoro, who I do my podcast with now. Mm -hmm. uh, Jake Flores, the guys that are in like New York now. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was, that, was, that was my open mic class. And uh, it's funny, man. Like, I was now like the scene's changed again. It's like everybody, it's we're like in New Austin. And I'm like, I'm realizing like I was on the road too much. I, like, I got to get back and like focus on local shit, take advantage of what's here. But you go out to the mics and there's a little nagging voice in the back of your head. And you're like, I did this already. Like, I already look, put man. In this it, work. It, 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 it's part of the game. Look, this. Yeah, it's, exactly. I, I just came back from. Uh, I just had a talk to this guy, uh, Nate Jackson from LA Times, about the Austin team. He's asking me, like, really? you know, what's it like? And I can't say that I've been around, at least doing comedy that long. But at least I was around back then. Yeah. To where. I knew what was happening even when I was not doing comedy. Yeah. Because I used to be, I used to go to Cap City all the time just as a fan. Yeah, yeah. Like was, way back in the day when Patrice would come through. Yeah. It, it's so cool how people can like plug into like a comedy scene and not be comics and just enjoy the local scene and be a fan. Sure. Of that. I think that's so, that's so rad. Like all the comedy wham guys are like that. Like, they're oh, like, yeah. Shout out yeah. to Valerie, man. Yeah, I, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it, that's how it works. You know, but, um, but I mean, it, it's one of those, you know, as much as, People were shit on the fact that, yeah, everybody's moving to Austin. Look, Austin's been in the top five best city to live in for years. Yeah. And then now everybody got the memo, and then COVID really accelerated yeah. things. So, you know, whatever. It's more opportunity. But what I appreciate, and this is what uh, the point I was making to the, to the to Nate, was that um, comics are taking upon themselves to produce shows. Yeah. So there's not really a gatekeeper anymore. Because Cap City yeah. was only game in town back yeah, then. Yep, yep, yep. And Vel in the Velveeta room, that was it. Yeah. And so now that it's become more decentralized, when people are running shows from Temple all the way to San Marcos, yeah. at a brewery, at a coffee shop, wherever, uh, and more clubs opening, more opportunity, but yeah, more people are going to move. That, that's just yeah. not... That's, just gonna happen yeah like I, I always try to take a pragmatic stance like you know like i'm, I'm, I'm in this i'm in this art shit for my the rest of my life like, I, I pretty much mm -hmm. figured that out 
And so I take a pragmatic stance. It's like you want to rap no more. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I still do a comedy rap group called Vanilla Presley. We did we did that last night. I was rapping at the Bass Drop Comedy Club. Oh, for real? Yeah. We, oh, we need to talk about that. We need to talk about yeah. that. So remind me, please. All right. Yeah, yeah. Vanilla, we do we do that for years. That's how I got my NBC credit was with fucking Vanilla Presley. But that's something like I I, uh, I I'm gonna be doing this for a while. You know, like whether in, in any capacity, I like I like making art. You know. Mm -hmm. And so like I'm pragmatic. If my city's popping, my city's popping. That's good for me. As an old school Austin guy, am I above like? throwing a few Lone Stars down my throat and talking some shit. You know, like, like obviously, you're going to get, like, it, like when it happened, it was like everybody had stopped because of COVID. Mm -hmm. All these cats showed up and they were doing shows. And yeah, that, that kind of, like, stung. You were just like, damn, I'm trying to, like, you know, we had our little scene here. We we're trying to take care of shit. We were like, all right, let's, everybody cooled it down. And then, like, you know, like, carpetbaggers, for lack of a better term, like, rolled in and set up shop. And it was like, obviously, these are just people, the regular dudes. I know them now. Mm -hmm. But at first, yeah, you're kind of like, yeah, what the fuck, you know? Like, I, I, I get, don't get me wrong. I get the sentiment. I, yeah, I, yeah. I really do. But I, but I'm I'm big on like this is I'm not saying it's all, it's all gonna be kumbaya. Yeah. Let's not let's not be let's not uh, fool ourselves. It's still a big high school. Oh, it's always gonna be. That, yeah, yeah, it's a big high school where you got clicks, you got people got egos, people got beef, yep. people got you know. And, and at the end of the day, you're like, look, man, you're just trying to be funny. You're just trying to trying to make it like everybody else in here. Uh, and I what I would love to see, and it's it's happening. I think it, it's more more collaborations between the different generations. Yeah. Like so like I saw Chris uh he was at the uh the soft opening of the sunset. Oh yeah, yeah that's right. Other, and yeah. I was like it was good to see him up there because <laughs> I'm like, a lot of these motherfuckers don't know who Chris is. Yeah, exactly. It's like you like like And Chris been like putting the work for yeah, a long yeah, that's time. That's my boy. Me and Chris were roommates for five years total. It was like in two different periods. Right. I I, read, I turned his dining room into a guest bedroom for two years one time. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's it's cool. I remember I went out to I did um one of those the one of those guys the the broken zoo dudes. I did one of their oh, shows. Oh, Morgan show. Yeah, I did one of their shows, and I was talking to somebody outside. They're like, "How long have you been in Austin?" I was like, "Where are you from?" I was like, "I'm from Austin." They're like, "Oh, you're like like a old school Austin comic." I was like, "Yeah." They were like, "Oh, should we never see you guys?" And I was like, "Yeah." It's like one of those like, "Oh, they're just as afraid of us as we are of them," kind of thing. Yo, right? Lando so so got bit about y'all move to East Austin. We can just rob y'all. Yeah, right yeah, yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> nobody here like but Lando can can do this joke. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And, but so I I think it's good because it gives people a sense that hey, this is not a new thing here. Yeah, exactly. Right, because yeah. people people see it as like, oh yeah, Rogan's here, Hinchcliffe's here, Segura's here. You know, we got Creek, we got, you know, uh, Ro not Roscoe's, we got East Austin yeah. Comedy Club. Great. But there's a history here. Yeah. And I think that now that Cap City is up here, it's kind of disconnected from what's happening downtown. Yeah, it is. Like, they're like the old man on the mountain Yeah, now. pretty much. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I used to rule over yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, shut up, old man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah. I, you know, I, I ride for Cap City. I love those guys. But yeah, it does feel like it was like uh Shit, it was almost like 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 the wire. It's like, hey, you don't have your corners. Like, what are you doing? Like, you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like uh, until if, if if another club opens between here and downtown, maybe a couple. Yeah. Like on the north side of Austin, as the like, oh, like I'm on my way home. I want to stop somewhere. Yeah. Stop some, some, see some comedy, or I live in a far west area, whatever, or yeah. I live in Round Rock, whatever. But it's it's they're yeah they're like, you know isolated from the whole thing because yeah. people just go downtown like oh the mothership oh sunset strip oh yeah. the cave oh the Alvita room and it's gonna it's gonna like I, i'm i'm not mad at that because again people are throwing the shows left and right which yeah. is great and if industry ends up coming here yeah it's gonna be like yo this is how we run shit here i don't care who you are yeah you don't need like we we built this without you. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? yeah, it's not yeah. like LA or New York. Yeah, and well, that was like, and you'll probably remember this. That was like a feature of of pre pandemic Austin comedy was like anybody that tried to roll in and like make money off the scene, kind of like washed out if their intentions weren't good. Mm -hmm. And I I was that was what I was kind of proud. I remember there was that cat. I don't want to like throw anybody under the buzz or anything, but somebody had showed up and they were gonna do a, a pay for a a pay a paid open mic where you pay to perform. Mm -hmm. And like now that would that would that would. Uh, pop off here, I think. People yeah, like, I would. Yeah, well, but, but then it was like, it was still the old school Austin scene and everybody was like, hold on, are you coming here trying to charge people for open mics? And the guy... I, I, know, I know exactly yeah, who yeah. you're talking about. And bless his soul because he was like, this is so commonplace everywhere else and we were just like... Nah. nah, nah. <laughs> Uh, that, yeah. I know, I know exactly what you're yeah. talking about. I have no personal uh, experience. With that guy, I'm sure he's fine. It was just yeah, very yeah, funny. Yeah. It was like 
Everybody was no, just he, t- he told me about the backlash he got. I'm like, yeah. I can't believe I'm trying to I'm trying to build something here. What yeah, the yeah. fuck? <laughs> we all comics, like relax. Yeah, yeah. One thing I'll say about like I, I think a commentary on pre Austin comedy is like uh and a commentary to criticism is I love the comedy that like slacker disaffected stoners crank out. I, I love it. It's very funny. I, I I get down on it. But when you start trying to like get plans popping with these guys and you're like, yo, let's try to get this club started to do this. Sometimes they can kind of be like either not bothered, yeah, you know, they don't want to bother with it, or they're just like, oh no, man, it seems like you're trying a little hard, you know. And I was like, a thing that, yeah, that was a thing that I would like. It was like you want, like, I want to hang out with these guys because I think they're cool dudes. I think like the cool kids in the comedy thing. I like what they're cranking out. Mm-hmm. But then when I'm like, hey, let's put together like a little four city run, and they're like, oh, I don't fucking deal. So there wasn't that, like that motivation to do shit. And that was one criticism. Is this about now or back then? This is back then. Yeah. So this is, this is what uh, the the journalist was asking me is like. Do, do, w- was Austin seen very Austin? Yeah. In the sense that I, I, Austin, by definition, is very Austin. It's Austin this, Austin yeah, that. We yeah. support local before we support anything yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, ideally. And so they were he's asking me, like, who, like, who was, like, kind of cultivated something here and kind of, like, exported it, was able to transition to another scene successfully? Yeah. I'm like, I don't know a whole lot. We, we did, so I know a couple of cats, one thing I was saying, but yeah, like, as far as, like, a lot of cats washed out, they would go to other scenes, and it, it, it did, but there was, like, a little contingency in L.A. and New York in, uh, for a while, where, like, you'd get out there, and we had some cats out there running shows, but yeah, nobody, nobody really went out there and blew up, maybe except for Dismukes, he, you know, he went on SNL and shit, mm-hmm. and then, like, you know, a couple of cats went and got writing jobs in New York, but yeah, there wasn't, like, a, uh, yeah, that, 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 that export, and then by the time they, they made it out there, they were known as L.A. or New York comics. They weren't known as Austin comics right, right, by right, the time right. they made it. And I, mean, I wonder if that, if that translates to other cities as well, because I would imagine, like, I wouldn't think of John Mulaney as a Chicago comic, that's where he's from, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe, I don't, I don't know if it's just, like, a perspective thing, but. I, I just couldn't, I just couldn't think of anybody. Yeah, yeah, for, yeah no, for sure. Maybe like, Maggie. Yeah, Maggie. There were a few other people who went out and did things, but, like, as far as, like, being out there and, and really being known as an Austin export, I don't really think it happened. Well, I mean, now is the time. Yeah, right. Shit, export me if anybody wants it. Right? <laughs> you want to expedite your ass? Yeah, out pay of for shipping. Put a barcode <laughs> on my ass. Scan me. Send me somewhere. I need it. No. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna dive into today's topic. Uh, so this one I, I've been wanting to do for a while because. I watch a lot of TV and I watch a lot of movies Same. and I'm very picky about yeah. what I watch. <laughs> and I, people, always, you know, you know, like how you get in a conversation with somebody and within 10 minutes and turns to, so have you seen this show on Netflix? Yeah. yeah, well, yeah. This thing? <laughs> like, uh, okay. Okay. I've, yeah. No, I have not watched Picky Blinders. Yeah, I don't give yeah. a fuck. All right. Relax. Um, <laughs> so, so we were, You're freaking everybody out. No, no <laughs> shit. I don't, I don't want to know what it's about. Game of Thrones, that, that, that's my bar. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah. Um, but yeah, we were going to talk about, we're going to talk about big money grabs yes. in Hollywood. Like, basically a franchise that you like, try to, you try to, you know, basically milk the shit out of it. Yeah, For yeah. no reason. Where once, <laughs> it's like, why did you even bother? Like, that was the only the sole reason why you felt like you need to hire a whole new yeah. crew <laughs> and put some money up because yeah. you know you were going to triple that money. Yeah, exactly. It, 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 it kind of, like, I, I think we, if we want to, before we talk about it, like, set, like, the definition of money grab, I think some people, like, obviously, I, I think people make things that they have respect for the IP and the intellectual property. Right. But a lot of people, I think, that when you see a money grab, you see it, and you're like, these people don't even like this shit. They just saw that, obviously, everybody loves... I don't know Sonic or whatever. Although I heard Sonic was dope, I that was actually it. pretty good. Yeah, yeah uh, but like, like you know, like people love Sonic, so it's like if you can, I think if you watch it as a fan, you know if the people making it like the shit or not, uh-huh. or if they're just like, okay, we know that people will buy these tickets no matter what we put up there. You know, we could do Lord of the Rings six and it just be like you know, dogs dressed up as hobbits and like <laughs> people will still go see it. There's some aliens in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, there's aliens. <laughs> it's a sci-fi element now. We're shaking things up, and people will go see it because they're like, well, I'm a Lord of the Rings fan. I will go see that. And it's, it's kind of funny. I what so uh, that's kind of on my list is one of those things. I don't know well, how we start. So the the one that you brought up before we turn the mics on, I'm yeah. gonna leave that one for last because that's one really dear to my heart. Oh, okay, okay, okay. We're gonna leave that one last. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So go ahead, go ahead. What's your first one? So then I would say uh, it would be it was actually the Lord of the Rings Amazon show. Oh, there's a. Oh shit, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, exactly. You know, <laughs> <laughs> one of the biggest franchises in movie history has. A huge budget show on Amazon Prime right now that only 37% per pe- of people who started it finished it. And I'm one of those 37. I started it. We watched three episodes. Um, 
Lord of the Rings, like I liked the movies. It it's not a, a um, an IP that's like close to my heart. Like growing up, I I read a lot, but I I read I tried to read Lord of the Rings. Maybe I tried them too early. I was like in fifth grade, and I was like, Oh, you you read the books? I tried to read the books in fifth grade. I have read the books, but I remember I tried when I was like really reading a lot in fifth and sixth, and they just were like a little too dense for me at the time, I guess. So I, I clocked out on them. So I like the movies, but it's not like I'm like beholden to like the Lord of the Rings. It's not like it's like a passion of mine. I appreciate the shit. I mean, it, it was at the time. When you think about the, the the epic story, right? Yeah. That I mean, they were long as fuck. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and so you're you're really taking you're basically introducing an entire universe to the public. Yeah. Right. And you got to know like who's who. Like all the, the same as Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Right? Yeah. yeah it's lot, the same kind lot, of thing. A lot of legwork. Like, like like you gotta you gotta wash this shit with a diagram next to you yeah. just to know <laughs> who's who, son of who, house of who, what. Yeah, yeah. Like it was one of those. And and so I can't think. I mean, if you if you take away Star Trek, Star Wars that have their own universe. Yeah, like uh, in terms of movies, was Lord of the Rings like the first one that was like, "Yo, this is whole yeah, fucking sp- thing. sprawling universe." Yeah, I yeah. think it, I think it was. I like because uh, yeah, because I remember like that was the thing when it, like a lot like when the superhero movies were popping out. Obviously, you had X Men, but X Men it wasn't part of a larger universe. Right, right, right. And then like they had those little one offs like your Daredevil and your Elektra, and when they I think they they maybe had intentions to try and merge them one day, mm-hmm. but nobody stuck the landing. And so you had all these like standalone little movies where like like that had the opportunity to be a world building movie, but they never did it with it. And I think Lord of the Rings was. Yeah, probably the first one to do it. Remember the first when when did the first one come out? Do you remember? Was it, I can look it up. Was it 99, 2000 and 2001 when those movies came out or was it 2000, 2001 and 2002? Or 2000, yeah, you know, like that time period. Let's see. Uh Fellowship of the Ring came out. Oh shit, I got a whole article here. Why are you sweating? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I got a whole other fucking person packed on my abdomen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I am a sweaty ass dude. If, if, if like the AC8 blaring, I will develop a little film uh, of sweat. Lord of the Rings, 2001. 2001, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, I, didn't, I didn't think that was, it was that far ago, that long ago. Yeah. Yeah. Over 20 years. That's insane. I, I remember. Uh, oh, it was three in a row. Yeah. Three, three years yeah, in a row. It was, it was 01, 02, and 03. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 yeah um, Really defined an era. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Post 9 11 fantasy movies. Yeah. Right. Um, what, like, it, it, it is funny how, like, those, those first, the first trilogy, like, kind of reflected, like, a lot of, like, the terrorism fears that were going on at the time. Cause, like, man, you go back and watch, it's still great movies, but, like, orcs in general, like, those dudes are a little too intelligent just be like these guys are just <laughs> evil they're like all these dudes are just snarling animals and like i remember the great tweet i can't take credit for it. this girl was like uh-huh. when the when the orc kills the other orc and says beats back on the menu boys they're like that implies that these guys live in a world that has menus restaurants table service <laughs> they understand that items can be 86 it's like you can't just genocide these fucking guys like these are these are real beings you know <laughs> i mean the, the thing that struck me with those is like the level of production, like the 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 war yeah. scenes, like yeah, I mean, Game of Thrones, of, of course, took it to another level. Yeah, but that was the first. What, what was the one where they? Is he Return of the King, where it's like big, like army fight, take over castle, and then the trees come out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, then, I I don't I think it was Return of the King, was the third one. Yeah, they run out the field at the yes, end. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. uh, but but then so they did they did the three. And this is what is that most of the books? Is that all the books? I believe, yeah, I believe, yeah, that was the book series. But then the Hobbits came out ten years later. Yeah, and as I understand, it was like those. You talk about the production value in Lord of the Rings. Uh-huh. The Hobbit, he was just like CGI, fucking everything. <laughs> like there was, there was no like, like, re, like, like, see, like in fucking Lord of the Rings, they made uh, uh, fucking what's uh, Elijah Wood sit like five feet back from Gandalf on that little trick shot, so it would look like he was He's small. Small, yeah. yeah. They like no amount of work was put in like that on the other three that dude was just like the green screen makeup and they, they looked soulless i only saw like one of them and it's the just hobbits like, yeah oh yeah i mean it, it, it it's it's on the same level but it's like like you've seen it yeah it's yeah, one of those yeah. like okay why what, was that necessary yeah so, uh, so i didn't bother with the the series yeah uh, good call <laughs> so three episodes and you're out three episodes it wasn't like i made a firm decision it was just like it never came back up in my mind to continue it so i i would, it, my, my take on these things is that so house of the dragon came out right around the same time as that mm-hmm. and they're both 
uh, medieval fantasy epics that are doing like um, a weird like second installment of a series that like people were doubting them. Basically, they all had the same doubts against them. Everybody was like, oh, they're going to be woke with the casting and now they got black elves and black targaryens so they were getting that criticism from like the nerd corners of the internet or those you know racist assholes mm-hmm. so they're getting that then there was the idea of like wait do these like subjects even really like apply into 2023 like game of thrones was very like rapey they're like and there's like kind of like undertones of racism in lord of the R- lord of the rings so they had these same criticisms and G- G- house of the dragon stuck the landing nailed it to the wall uh-huh. love that season of television it was uh-huh. great can't wait to see the rest lord of the rings fell flat on his fucking face and i love that it just drained like a, a, a billion from bezos's pocket because you know like I, anytime <laughs> i hear that's good news to me and so it is basically it's a lot of it is fan service uh it's the point of like I, they, they have these paper thin characters you don't give a shit about and they only exist so they can be like we're going to schmarkington now and if you read the books you go oh schmarkington they only ever mentioned that or whatever i'm making shit up at this point but uh-huh. they're like, they only mentioned that you know like in the books i never actually saw it and if that's important to you to to see a pretty well done cgi rendering of a place you read about in a book watch the series if you're actually watching for a show to watch it's not there. <laughs> like, oh yeah, wow! Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm a, then. I'm glad I'm out. Yeah, God damn. yeah, yeah. You didn't miss it's anything. Boring. Yeah, it's it's mad boring. Like they try to like like um they try to like tackle some themes and stuff and like it's just kind of clumsy, but like one of the, the the first things I noticed is just like, uh, very goofy like very fast paced story where it's like. It's not like this is happening because this happens. It's like this is happening and then this is happening and now they're going here. So not really a story to think of, but one of the, just the funniest things is that to me what made me kind of turn it off or like laugh at the end of the episode. These orcs get taken or these elves get taken prisoner uh-huh. uh, by these orcs or these elvish uh, soldiers and they get put in like a chain gang essentially for the orcs who are tunneling under some castle. And so they're, they're building the tunnel and they're like digging through the ground and they get to the root system of this big tree uh-huh. and all the elvish workers stop. And they're like, we're not going to do it because, like, we're, like, trees are sacred to us. We're not putting our axes in these trees. Mm-hmm. And then the orcs are like, well, if you don't fucking start doing that, we're going to start killing elves. And it's so only one elf is brave enough to do it. It's, it's the main character. And he steps up, and he goes to swing the axe at this tree. And I was like, immediately, I was like, that actor has never worked a day in his life. Like, <laughs> he's, he's, he's like. <laughs> is it, did, did, did it get renewed, you know? Now that I, so I understood is that they were banking on it so hard, they were like five seasons out the gate they approved it for. They had a five-season story frame, uh-huh. and nobody cares, and nobody watched it, and nobody gives a shit. I don't know how beholden they are to that release schedule or to that production schedule. Obviously not. If it's going to lose the money, they'll probably scrap it. Uh-huh. But, like, Amazon's got deep pockets. You know what I'm saying? They could just do it. Yeah, but, I mean, if you're just doing it for content, it's like, are you... But it's a cash grab at that point. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. That's yeah, what it is. That's what it is. You're right. You're, you're, yeah. <laughs> you're hitting right on the head. It is a cash grab. Yeah, it's like they were like, these nerds are going to they're, they're gonna eat whatever we fucking shovel down their throats. And I think this was like an instance where they didn't do it. They were like, no, we're not. This is, we can tell your heart's not in this. This shit kind of sucks. We're all set. Well, isn't there, there's a, uh, is there a Gollum movie coming? Isn't there? Is there? Jesus Christ. I hope not. There's a Gollum video game. That's t- that. That actually sounds kind of tight. And I think there's a Gollum movie. I th- Is it going to be Andy Circus? Oh, it, it, I mean, it, it, yeah. it has to. Yeah, it yeah. has to be. <laughs> no, oh no, it's just a video game. Word. Oh yeah, just a video game. But they, they got they got to make. That's the thing. Like it. Once you once they get greedy, they get greedy. Yeah, so yeah, they'll yeah. take they'll take another character and spin <laughs> them off. Because meanwhile, Game of Thrones do another prequel to the prequel. Of yeah, the shit. even even more prequels. Which I I the Game of Thrones one that one I'm fully like I I I didn't read I listened to the books on audio uh, on Audible because mm-hmm. I I don't have the time to sit down and read books. And when I was working construction, I, I watch the show. It's even lazier. I love yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, I listened to the books on Audible. They're fucking great. Uh, the dude who did the uh, the the audio work is guy Roy Detrees. He was in like a bunch of bunch of movies he's a character actor and he ended up winning like grammys for the the lord of the rings perform not lord of the rings but the game of thrones audiobooks because uh-huh. he fucking killed it and then uh those were good and then i listened to house of the dragon on audiobook too so it's like i, I, I kind of know what i'm seeing going into the next show mm-hmm. but that world like the whole like, game of thrones world that is like i'm more knowledgeable about that place than real world politics. <laughs> like I, I really, dove, I dove in on the YouTube videos. I watched all the backstory stuff, the fan theory shit. That that universe, I dig. I get down on, and so 
again, it's one of those things. If there is a diminishing quality and they start just putting out slop, right. I will still gladly eat it up. I'm like, it was. Oh, they're gonna have a show about a house that got mentioned twice in five books ago, and they're gonna have a whole you show about it. it. I'll watch it. I, I, the part I hated about Game of Thrones is that they would bring back a character. You're like, wait, what the? Where did where, where did he come from? Yeah, Who is this yeah. uncle? <laughs> uncle what? House of Boo? <laughs> the fuck is he? And you have to go back. Look, I, I seriously, and this is one of those like my 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 best friend was really into it, and she was like, back back, you have to watch this thing. I'm like, yeah. first of all. Your recommendation is usually on point, but I have when I have time. Yeah. She got me to watch House. And got me to watch, oh, wow. Which is dope. No, which is yeah. dope, right? Going back and hitting old network shows is hard because they have like 36 episodes a season. Like, yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. And I'm like, I gotta watch all this. And then I'm yeah. like, okay, so Game of Thrones, cool. It's like, yo, watch it. Put it, put your laptop next to you so you know who's what because they're going to bring back somebody and be like, the fuck is he yeah. again? <laughs> and, and, and so, but I, I appreciate the like the 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 rawness of it yeah as far, as far as game of thrones i'm not i wasn't one of those like you know when you start having like 20 different stories happening at the same time yeah. at, least, at least in lord of the rings there's only one story yeah that, yeah that is very true yeah game the, of thrones yeah. is confusing <laughs> as fuck because you're like okay yeah. they go on this adventure and then they go on that adventure and then you, you sometimes you don't hear about them yeah you catch them back you're like wait what happened to them again <laughs> and you trying to wrap it all up in six episodes no yeah dude the one that tripped me out that i because i uh i i watched like I, when i first watched game of thrones obviously like sometimes like you know you walk away from an episode you miss something or you fall asleep and two episodes play or whatever yep and i remember i i forget gosh i forget oh it was um when Euron Greyjoy just showed back up, or showed up for the first place, and he, he hadn't been in the show before, I, remember, I was kind of like, wait, who who is this guy? I was like, yeah, that, that would trip me out. I was like, where did he come from? He killed he killed the guy at night on the bridge, and I had nothing, no clue. And he kind of shows up like that in the books, too. In the books, it's just like, oh, there's another Greyjoy, by the way, and he's here, he's back now. Is, is there any uh, big uh, actor in the Amazon series? Um... Not really. It's all kind of like not really unknowns, but like less household names. I think the biggest actor is uh, the guy who plays Viserys, the 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 main king, uh, in the beginning of the show, uh, is Patty Constantine. No, no, for the Lord of the Rings one. Oh, Lord of the Rings. No, no, no. It's again that one's all kind of like unknown. I could have sold it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get a get a big name or something. But <coughs> yeah, the thing is get that, a midget and get the other yeah, dude. In yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like they don't like. There's no performance in it that's like, like I if they would have gotten like a real high caliber actor in there, I could imagine they would have been bored as shit because they'd have been like, I yeah, that's yeah. True. That's, <laughs> I work for Amazon now. Look at me. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Right. I do. I got to drive the truck next after this. <laughs> <laughs> next thing I'll do catering for the spinoff yeah, show. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. this is my next <laughs> career move. Yeah, they're like, hey guys, look, we're not renewing season two, but we're gonna get you the best routes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you got you guys are gonna you're gonna be back home by six, seven at night. You know, like every day. You know, you have two hours to spend with your kids. All right, so my mine is this one I I I get it and I don't get it. The Fast and Furious series. Oh yeah, I'm I'm wow. kind of in your camp. I, I'm surrounded by people that love it and like they're fun, but like I don't yeah. How I, many I, how many times yeah, can you yeah, tell yeah, the yeah. same story? <laughs> It's like, it's like telling the Spider-Man or the Batman story all over again. Yeah. It's like, we get it. You drive nice cars. Yeah. <laughs> and then at the, if they have a meeting, at there's, what, 10 of them now? Yeah. Plus the Hobbs and thing. Yeah, the little the, side universe. Yeah, yeah. 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 I want to call it universe. It's yeah, just yeah, like, yeah, a, yeah. look, we got Jason Statham and The Rock are going to do a show. Yeah. That, that be the, <laughs> they might develop it. I don't know. But it's like, let's do a high-octane, you know, movie about cars racing. I'm like... Okay, I can, I'm not into cars, yeah. but I, 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 I can respect that. Like, this, that's a world that I know nothing about. It has its own codes. It has yeah. its own language. It has its own, like, okay, cool, I'm with it. I watched the first one, and I'm like, all right, yeah, these dudes love to race. Yeah. And then, and, but next thing you know, they start to, like, yo, we got to save the world. I'm like, yeah. no, 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 race. Yeah. Race, what happened to the fucking race? Yeah, it's, it is the wildest departure from, from reality. No, no, I'm, I swear to God, they got to be high on PCP. Yeah. It starts, it's the it thing. Okay. Last time they drove on ice, being chased by a submarine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in, 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 in in Antarctica, or some shit yeah, like that. Yeah. How can we amp it? Yo, let's have it jump buildings. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like I think the next one, that I, the next one, I believe they're like not necessarily in space, but like in high atmosphere. And yeah, yeah. The, the, what I do like about the next one that's coming out, I think the plot line is going to be because I remember one time I got. 
high as shit with my boys. We watched the Fast and Furious, I believe five, where they steal the it safe. It don't matter. It's the yeah, same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. They're all the same. <laughs> they Except for the Tokyo Drift. Nobody gives yeah, a shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they steal the safe. They steal the safe from a police department that's full of all this drug dealer cash, and they drive it to the streets of Rio de Janeiro on chains. And that's right. And they're just destroying Rio, and they're like wiping out sidewalk cafes and shit. They're knocking civilians off the bridge, and it's just like clearly they're they're the bad guys in this. It's like you guys. You know, like they, they had the movie magic where it's like, no, the bad guy shot his his henchman. So he's actually he's worth all this to do this to. So the next one is coming out. I guess Jason uh, Momoa plays like the son of like uh, some dude had like a fucking papaya truck or something. Like, I don't know what I don't know what goes on there. <laughs> <laughs> papaya truck. <laughs> like, yeah, it is. His papaya truck dad like you know, gets knocked off the bridge and he's like it like rightfully is like, wait, wait, wait. Street racers from Los Angeles, like, came here and did all this because our our, corrupt, our police force had two corrupt guys at the top, and they did they they yeah they acted extra judiciously or the fuck you want to say, and he's like that cannot stand. I gotta go kill Dom Toretto now, <laughs> and, and fuck your family. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is a family. Another, another detail that's very funny about that universe is that everyone has like godlike respect for dominic toretto and like oh yeah 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 he'll just bump into people and it'll be like the it's like new character gets introduced the last one was cardi b played like a, a bank robber lady who just shows up out of nowhere saves their ass and she's like well when i heard my boy dom was in trouble i got here quick and it's like how do you he meets helen mirren's character and she's like oh dom i love that man and it's like wait, how did he I, this, and he has five lines in the whole movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just—he's always working on a car. Like he's just like, like he just pops like, up. Dom, we need you. Yeah. What? What is it again? I've, I've been trying to retire for the past ten years. Yeah, yeah. I got a family now. Yeah. It's like I guess they have the plot line where um, what's his face? Paul Walker just is is just out the crew. Like, he's still alive in the universe. He just—he's always like one room over. Like, no, no. I remember, he like they 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 got to a fork and he went left. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he <laughs> he drove he, to oblivion. Yeah, there's yeah, yeah, yeah. he lives in like another universe now. But like at the end of the last one I saw, they pull up my my girl loves him, so like uh I've, I'm gonna learn to love him. <laughs> but like they Good pull luck. they pull up and like and they're all just barbecue and then like the last shot is one of the house and Paul Walker's car you know, you'll see him, but it pulls up and they're like, Oh hey, he's back from the store, I guess, or whatever. It's implied that he's still on the scene. You just don't see him. Well, they brought back the China the Chinese dude, the Japanese yeah. dude. Like yeah. I thought he died in a fiery accident. Yeah, that's the thing. I guess it's one of those things where like they're, they're like, look, we're not killing it. Like we're gonna kill everybody, but none of them are gonna stay dead. You know, like, that's how you. That's how you, you know what? I'm glad Ludacris and uh, Tyrese are still alive. Yeah. <laughs> that's my after yeah. ten, ten of them. Yeah. I'm like Tyrese is still here, Luda is still here, kicking ass, making smart ass re- uh, yeah. remarks. I'm good. I'm good. But but it, it's it's one of those like it, it it's like the. Uh, uh, the car version of the Expendables. Like, how yeah, can we just, yeah, like, yeah. we can, I hope they don't make it longer, first of all. Because I don't know if I can take three oh, hours of this shit. Yeah, dude. That, that's the thing that's happening now. Every movie is like, you know, nine, uh, fucking 300 minutes. Yes. Into, yeah. And, and and I really thought that after Paul Walker died, that they were going, because they were shooting one. Yeah. So like, okay, let's do another one because he was in it. Let's put his, use his, his brother's body and yeah. fucking CGI's face in. Yeah, Whatever, yeah. right? No, totally Fine. natural. Fine. <laughs> and be like, all right, by the end of the, that one, we're going to, at the end of every, of every, every, if you're, they're doing, they're barbecuing at the house. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, you destroyed a city. You destroyed an entire yeah. village yeah. and the cars you drive. Because at first, that was the appeal, right? Like, yeah. hey, this is car racing. Like, it's this, it's this scene. There's the hot chicks, there's pool parties, dudes yeah. with money. You know, the cars always end up fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, if you care so much about the damn cars, yeah. then don't fuck them up. Yeah. Like, don't try to <laughs> dive buildings. Don't do not do all the... Like, they, and do you love or hate cars? <laughs> oh, you know, you know what would be great is if they, they, took, <laughs> they took Jay Leno's garage and... <laughs> <laughs> And made a Fast and Furious with it. I mean, they got tanks. They're like, for this job, I'm going to need an old friend of mine. He's like, oh, hey, what's up, Dom? How you doing? (laughs) I'm going to need a 4T. I need a T-model. Fucking steam-powered car. No, but but then see, that's when you reinvent the series. Yeah. And you make it fun. You're like, hey, first of all, all those cars, like, there's only so many, like, car movies. Uh, There was Gone in 60 Seconds. There was Cars. 
Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, good point, yeah. good point, good point. Well, yeah, they made one of few, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they made three of those. Yeah, Shit. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, so Gone in sixty seconds. That's the first one I can remember. Yeah, the Nick Cage movie. Yep, and it was, a, and those were actual. Yo, those were like legendary cars. Those yeah. were like. You know, muscle cars, like, you got to know about the shit. Yeah, yeah. And I thought when, when Fast and Furious came around, I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to learn about the world of cars. Next thing I know, I'm learning about family. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, fuck? Yeah. Like, I can, I don't yeah, need yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I don't need, yeah, I have a for this. There's yeah, yeah, yeah. for this. You know what I mean? There's plenty of yeah, them. Yeah. I don't need a lesson on family <laughs> from fucking Vin Diesel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I really don't. Um, it, um. I did, so I, I did, where'd you grow up at? Did you grow, like, like I grew up in France. In France? Oh shit, that's fucking cool, man. I lived in Germany for quite some time. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, but like, anyway, yeah, yeah, different country, same continent. But <laughs> so it's next door. It's fine. Yeah, it's, yeah. Three, it's a three-hour train ride. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, so I grew up in Killeen, Texas, and after uh, fucking uh, Fast and Furious hit. Uh-huh. Uh, the car club culture that exploded out of that was just hilarious to me, uh, and that's kind of what soured me on the movies when I was in high school because I was like. I don't know, like, like, I just thought it was kind of like corny that these dudes, like, like it, the movie comes out and now that all these guys are like overall in car clubs and they just have like Dodge Neon SRT fours <laughs> and shit and they hang out at the fucking at the car wash. Now that I'm older, the car I'm like, wash, yeah, yeah, that's really what it was. And now that I'm older, I'm like, yeah, do you think? Yeah, we all need to, you know, we all need a place to fit in. But when you're a kid, you're like, look at these like, losers. They watch the movie and now they're all hanging out at these car clubs. But it really caused like a like a movement where I was at, and then the same thing happened with Sons of Anarchy. Sons of Anarchy came out, then everybody's in every, the every biker. Everybody, yeah, everybody I knew, a lot of the guys I knew from back home at this point, a little older, a lot of them had turned into like libertarian dads, and then Sons of Anarchy dropped, and now overnight, oh, you're all bikers now. Like, oh, you, oh, I've seen I've seen that with uh, with dance movies when Step yeah, Up oh, came yeah, out, yeah. when when uh, uh, save, the Save the Last Dance, Step Up, and um, you got served. You got served, especially yeah. you got served. Cause I was already a dancer. I danced. Yeah. At, I was at dance studio here. Everybody got started. Oh man, I can. You mean to tell me I can get girls and yeah, I, if yeah. I can do a windmill, I'm like, yeah, try that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> try that. Try to do a windmill. You gonna bust your hip? Yeah. Fuck around. Yeah. No, that, I mean, that's what it does. It it, yeah. it introduces the new culture, yep. the subculture to the world. But then again, it's like, how do you, how do you reinvent it? Because there's no way you're doing an eleven. Yeah. yeah, and then, then they're going to run out of titles too. They're do it. I, the, I I think prequel night oh, is night is is nineteen. Like, we, we wouldn't have enough cars to be cool, but cars still run. Maybe like nineteen forties L A. Is Dominic Toretto's grandfather? Oh fuck me, <laughs> fuck me. And then he's hanging out, and he doesn't even know it, but he's hanging out with Paul Walker's grandfather. They get into a they get into a whole little thing, and they don't even know that one day their grandkids are going to change the world. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> yeah. Please don't. Actually, if you do it, do it around the Industrial Revolution. That would make it yeah, just <laughs> turn of the century cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. do that. Do just that. That that will watch. Plowing through fields of coughing. No, no. But the, 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 what's interesting also is that they 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 do run out of titles. Yeah. Of course, because they're fast, they're furious. Yeah. Fast, furious. Fast, fast yeah, nine. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, don't get it twisted. It's the same movie. Yeah, so just yeah, because yeah, you remove yeah. one word, it's like it. It Tokyo Drift, all right, who cares? Yeah. But it's the same thing. And I'm like, you got, at some point, <laughs> just, you got to be like, hey, man, I think we, we've we talked people about family and all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think they know family now. They yeah, know our yeah. families. Families are fucked up. People yeah. die, come back out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, you know how families do. You know, like, you lose track of your brother, and y'all bump back at each other down the road, and he's an international espionage agent. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. shit like that. Dude, there's a scene in the last one where they're in, I think, Prague, and fucking uh, uh, John Cena's character to get like the escape on the crew, uh, he um, like wires across a bunch of built rooftops, uh, these little like uh, rappel lines, uh-huh. and but it goes on for a very long time. And they show like one scene where you see how he's doing it. He's stopping on one rooftop, and they already have the line set up, and he's clicking to another one. Right. But from the the, the point of the chase, it's just like they'll do like a couple scenes of car shit, and then it'll cut, and he's still just like. Zzz. <laughs> like, he's like, and it, like, and it just keeps going back. Like, there's no way he's still going on one zip line. It's, it's pretty bad. It, it's, it's just over the top, and you're like, it's not necessary anymore. We get it. Yeah. You like cars. You like family. <laughs> and and Vin Diesel. Wait, hold on. Also, families don't traditionally drive those models of cars. No, if it was really about family, they drive minivans. This Fast Furious Eleven is that the one that's coming out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one where Jason Momoa. Uh, 
Pos- Posted, that is 11. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, oh, it, it I is thought 11. that was 10. Yeah, and you, you said it couldn't be done, and here we are. <laughs> okay, <laughs> uncharted I, I, waters. Let me look up 12. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just to be safe. Well, you, you know what these things do is they, obviously they have the core cast, but then it's like Brie Larson's in the next one. And it's like it's it's a vehicle for for not no pun intended, you know, but it's like it's a vehicle like it's just like hey, what name is hot right now? What name is popping in action? We'll wedge them in here, and then like we can spin off of their, uh, their spin their career off of that and out of there. Yeah, but they don't have a career after that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, where you see Vin Diesel lately? Yeah, so, well, you yeah, playing Groot? Groot, yeah, yeah, I got Groot. He didn't get Groot from Fast and Furious. No, maybe because yeah. he doesn't have that many lines. He's smart. Yeah, his yeah, lines yeah, are not yeah, smart. Yeah. Well, yeah, he wasn't in much else. Like, there was, like, a while, there was, like, the heyday where, like, Vin Diesel movies were would come out and he'd be in a new movie. And now it's just Fast and the Furious. It's also, my man, I don't know the last one I've seen. I'm no guy to talk. Looking a little doughy, Vin Diesel. Yeah, He's man. He, 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 he can't be rocking them Temp Talks yeah, no yeah, more. Yeah. With your fat-ass arms. <laughs> You're going to be flying next. Yeah. You're going to be flapping your arm fat. Yeah, the last one, like in the final scene, he was wearing like a, like a powder blue sweater vest, uh-huh. and he's like, he looked doughy, like he was getting like like church pictures taken, <laughs> like he was like, like a little yeah. Kid. You should you should you should have give you should have just let go when Paul Walker did and walk and drive yeah. it to the sunset, yeah, 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 literally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should have driven to the sunset. Yeah. Oh I, shit! I, man, yeah, I guess that's gonna keep those are gonna keep going forever. That's no, they said I just read it. There's not gonna be a twelve. Them, yeah, they, but, they, but they say a lot of shit. Yeah, they say that, <laughs> and then they say, "Let's explore the Hobbs and yeah, thing yeah, more." Yeah. Let's get, let's get. Jason Statham's a great action I star. Love Jason I love Jason Statham. Yeah, but and like, yeah, let's explore that some more. Like, yeah. All right, we're done. All right, what's your next? Next one uh, was the Space Jam remake. Right? Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> so here's the thing. This, okay, I have, yes. I have not seen it. Uh, these are wildly uninformed opinions, but I will confirm a lot of the things <laughs> you're about to say because I watched it three months ago with my yeah. son, and I gave him a disclaimer, and he agrees with it, and he's yeah. five. <laughs> Even he gets it. And he's like, "This is over the top, man." Well, like I, I saw the first one, loved it. It was like, it was a fucking it was a cultural phenomenon. I lived I was living in Germany when I saw it. I was, I was in France. France. Yeah, I was sixteen. Yeah, ninety six. Shit came out, and so like, I saw. Uh, yeah, I saw I saw that over there, and as a kid, I loved it. I remember got the the home video, and it had like a little Space Jam coin, mm-hmm. you know, all in on it. And I, then I've gone back and rewatched it, and it is, it's bad. I mean, like it's like the end. Mainly, Wait, I mean, the, like the, the first one, the first one. Yeah. So like like this is you know peppering my my expectations for the next one. I loved it when I was a kid. I went back. It's not so much that it's bad, which it's it's not good, but it's like the animation. It's like is this is Warner Brothers with their flagship characters, and like it just looks like dog shit. When you go back and watch the animation, it's not like this like Toy Story moment where you see this huge 3D world or whatever, like uh-huh. and you're like, oh wow, they really but whatever. Uh, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I was like, it's an animation company that is like has a, like, their flagship characters, and I'd imagine a huge budget, and like it looks, I just looks bad. It just looks plain. Like the the, the the animation doesn't pop. It doesn't really have. I don't know. That's what that was my take. Was that it looked bad when I went back and rewatched it. So I I watched it when I was 14 when it came out. I'm just dating myself right now. <laughs> um, and what I loved about it. Well, one, basketball, cartoons, because back then there wasn't that many movies like that. I mean, yeah. Roger Rabbit was one that was really, I thought was really well done. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, Roger it, Rabbit. Was yeah. yeah, so you're like, okay, it's Michael Jordan, I get it, he's at a height this game, you know, and then at the time, I was like, yo, the soundtrack is dope. That, yo, that's what it was. The dude, soundtrack, yeah. hit him high. Uh, with yeah, like yeah. Buster Rhymes, Method Man, Cypress yeah, Hill. Like, I mean, be real cool, yo. LL uh, Cool J. Yeah, a po- like, like, like a wild ass like posse cut, like that that, that that where the song actually goes and it's on the Disney set or uh, the, the, uh, a Space Jam soundtrack. That yeah, yeah I hit him high, high, hit him high. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, that and yeah, the, I believe that from Can Fly, R. Run, Kelly. Yeah, run up in this shit, take the championship. My, oh, dude, my, I, my son, my son loves the the quad. The Quad City DJs. Oh yeah, yeah. Everybody dude. get up! Uh, it's time yeah, to slam yeah, yeah. now. We got a real jam going. Like the, yeah, the whole dude. intro yeah. is just dope. I dude, I lo- as a kid, I loved Quad City DJs. Dog. I had the fuck when they when they had a uh, uh, it was it was, it was Tootsie Roll and they had a uh, uh, ride the train was there too. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Come on, we got a train. Right, and like I got the album and like. Again, it's one of those things where, like, you forget when you're a kid, you're like, that artists have, like, huge filler on albums. But, like, I don't know, I, I liked it. I jammed it. That's fine. Quad City DJ. And, and so there was a – the thing is you didn't need a deep plot for Space Jam because yeah. you know that, you know, uh, Michael Jordan is not an actor. Yeah. Right? So, like, Bill Murray and then the other, the fat dude – I forgot his name. He's in every movie in the 80s. Wayne Knight. Wayne, yeah, that yeah. Wayne Knight. This, this is going to be, like, the funny thing. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And, of course, you re- the cartoons, great. 
So you don't need. It's not. A, it's not about the plot so much. Because yeah, Charles Barkley's fucking acting in yeah. this movie. Yeah. <laughs> so, and it, 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 it's it's about hey, let's do something different. Yeah. And at the time, it was a great idea. It was a great promo for Michael Jordan. Great promo for yeah. for the NBA. That were great. Fast forward to. LeBron, yes, because the one that when the rumors started coming out about a Space Jam two, they were like, "Oh, who's it gonna be?" I'm like, come on, it's got to be LeBron. There's nobody yeah. else. But it, uh, so you didn't watch it. I have not. No, okay. I, I, yeah. So, so let me let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I, 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 from what I know, I was assuming it qu- it fits the qualifications of cash grab. So, yeah. So when you were talking about this is Warner Brothers and we're like they should have better animation and everything. Yeah. The whole movie is a commercial. For Warner Brothers, yeah, it's all of their IPs in one. So you spend more time, what during the game at the end, yeah, looking to see who's in the audience. Oh, there's Iron Giant. Yeah, there's uh, there's fucking this Game of Thrones. Dead White Walkers in the audience. Oh, dude, yeah, Yo, that, that, th- so this is the part I'm most familiar with, having not seen it. Because I, I watched a whole bunch of shit discussing the game and what was in there. Yes, but yeah, they had the guys from Clockwork Orange. Yes. who are rapists. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. the mask, the mask was there. Yeah, yeah. Jim Carrey mask was in the audience. They and then all the cartoons, the front stones that I spent most of my because I'm like, yeah, I'm a huge fan of the Warner Brothers. Shit. Yeah, yeah. But it's like it was a, a it was a Nike commercial. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And a Warner Brothers commercial because the whole plot of the 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 the, uh, the movie is we're gonna pitch LeBron, hey, we're gonna put you in all of our IPs. So the within the first ten minutes of the movie, LeBron sits in the in the board meeting. Yeah. And there's this fucking Don Cheeto Al G rhythm. <laughs> fucking dumb. Oh, stupid no. Al G rhythm. No, no, no. Don Cheeto, who's a very respectable actor, oh, looked yeah, bored as fuck in this in this character. Yeah, yeah. I'm Al G rhythm. I'm making punts for a living yeah. as, a, as a fucking computer. <laughs> and he's he's pitching to LeBron, hey, how about we put you in a Game of Thrones world? And then you'll be LeBron this. And we put you in this other series we got going yeah, it's, it's, on. We put you in, in in all the HBO shows we got, pretty yeah. much. And LeBron was like, nah, I'm not doing that. And that's when Al G Rhythm decides, okay, I'm a, I'm gonna put you in your game. So I'm gonna I'm gonna kidnap your son that you're don't get along with because you want him to be a basketball player, but he's a nerd. Yeah. <laughs> and we're gonna I'm gonna bring him into my universe. Am I gonna be his dad? And I'm going to challenge you to give him a basketball so you can get your son back. <laughs> but in the process, you're going to save the world because if you lose, then everybody gets trapped in the, how do you call it? The multiverse. Yeah. Whatever the fuck. So it's literally a big commercial for Warner Brothers and Nike. Yeah. That's all it is. That's bad. Yeah, and I, I the did, soundtrack sucks. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I know of not one banger. Off of the, like, like None. Nothing, nothing is broken out. As the, oh, my God. And, and the funny thing is, so I... I watched it with my son. We watched the first one first. I said, look, son, this is Michael Jordan. This is top, like, nobody comes close to Michael, okay? Yeah. There's only one Mark, Michael Jordan. I was fortunate enough to grow up, you know, with him. Yeah. Uh, even back in France. Didn't yeah, matter. Yeah, yeah. Right. He was and one of the, living in Germany. He was one of the things people knew about Americans. Oh, yeah. It was, oh, Michael, oh, Jordan, it was, yeah. The, it was Michael Jordan, Michael Jackson, yeah. <laughs> and Michael Johnson, the, yeah. the runner. I, Those are the Michaels. That, yeah, that was not lost to me as a kid. I read, noticed that. I was like, that's, that's kind of crazy. Yeah. I had the Michael Johnson shoes. They looked like shit. <laughs> <laughs> you want to run like a rabbit? Like yeah, this? I was just like, dude, I got him because I was like, like they just like, they, I was like, oh, it's the Michael Johnson shoes? Like, they were like, not necessarily running shoes, but they just, they weren't hot. <laughs> no, they, were not. <laughs> they did not wow people on the first day of sixth grade. So I sit him down. I'm like, okay, go and watch Space Jam. We love basketball. This is Michael Jordan, and he loves it. And then I go, okay, now I don't want to skew you. Yeah. You're five years old. You don't know shit. <laughs> but we're about to watch Space Jam 2 with LeBron. He doesn't know who LeBron is. And we're watching it, and the whole time he's, he's just like, it's too much. Yeah. Because they, they, they go so, so it's like, it's like they hired a bunch of writers. And they try to see what are the topics of the day that we can tap into that will resonate with everybody. Yeah. So. Algae rhythm, baby. Algae rhythm. Yeah. Fucking Porky Pig did a battle rap. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, and, and they had a, oh, yes. I want, th- there's a scene, it's dumb, where they're like, oh, just trying to put the, the team together, right? Just like in the first one. So yeah. I put the team together, and then Daffy comes out. He goes, "I find, I found Michael Jordan. I find, I find Michael Jordan." 
and then Michael B. Jordan walks in. <laughs> and I'm like, you had to do that? Yeah, yeah. You had to do that? I mean, they I get it, to. but yeah. no, that was not necessary at all. Yeah. At all. And then they turn, instead of being animated, like cartoon, like 2D animation, they turn them like 3D. Yeah, which... Like I, Paw Patrol kind of shit. Yeah, that there, there's like, like I don't mind new movies like that, but when they take old animated animation and try to blip them into like the 3D stuff, it always it's almost like Uncanny Valley. It's like, no, his his face should be flat. <laughs> did, did you see the Chip and Dale movie? I saw like the first 15 minutes of it. Okay, we'll, we'll get into that. Yeah, yeah. Our last thing. We're probably going to get to that next because, yeah, we're going to run out of time. Uh, but yeah, the, the Space Jam 2, I don't, it didn't do well. I hope it didn't do well. I yeah. hope they don't do a 3. <laughs> and I was like, please don't pick like, you know, d- just don't. Th- I, d- so this is the this is the broader and this transition to what we talk about next. This is a broader topic of there's just some movies that should be just left alone. Yeah, I felt the same way about coming to America. That that was just not. I even seen it. Yeah. Did you see it? I, I, I've, seen, I've seen coming to America, but I, yeah. I've not seen coming to, to America. America. No, just that alone. Yeah, yeah. Just that, that alone. That shows me you're not taking the, taking this seriously. Yo, like, they did just. It, it was basically let's just check boxes. Yeah, we're yeah. Going, we're gonna have a, a joke about transgender. We're gonna tackle uh, how now he's in New York and now it's it's gentrified. Queens is gentrified. Yeah. They have to check that box. Yeah, yeah. We have to do. Oh, oh, we're going to shoot the whole thing at Rick Ross's house. So, of course, he's going to have a role in it because it has nothing to do with the story. And we'll pick every black actor not working right now <laughs> and put him, dump him in there and see how it sticks. And yeah. you're like, no, not necessary. <laughs> Leave it alone. Like if tomorrow they did a Back to the Future 5. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, no, we don't. Yeah, we don't need that. Make a new movie, man. Like, come up with new shit. Yeah, come up with new shit. Well, was, I saw like I, I, I don't know, we'll be jumping ahead, but I, I, I tweeted yesterday. They had a thing on a CNN headline about the new Little Mermaid, and it was like songwriter changes lyrics of some songs to uh, include consent. And I was like, just make a new movie. Like, yeah, yeah. Make, yeah, like just make a new movie that gives a good lesson about consent. Like, like you know, or, like it just feels like it's like with the Disney remakes. I, I don't no, no, no. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Fuck yeah. it. Let's go. Yeah. Go We're gonna <laughs> so, spend the next thirty minutes on this shit because. <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah. This is yeah. This is the biggest grab so ever. So this remakes. First of all, like first things first. Nobody asked for this. Nobody nobody wanted any of those things to happen. I think the only one I think that maybe had some appeal would be Lion King, simply because it might be cool to see lions doing it. You know, maybe I don't know. I can see there being that the reasoning, but like. It's like these movies, a lot of them were made a long fucking time ago. A lot of them are, haven't aged well in so many ways. Like, yeah. a lot of them have, like, themes that are kind of weird and characters that are, you know, just regrettable at, at, at best. And it's like, no. Nope. Jafar is gay? Yeah. yeah oh, yeah, yeah. Like, the, the original queer-coded villain. Like, you didn't even know they were doing it. You were just like, there's something menacingly effeminate about that man. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, they just did all these things are it's like they had to change things to keep up and it's like it's always going to be clumsy i'm not i'm not saying like you should those should be sacred you shouldn't touch them but i'm saying like it's not gonna it's just not gonna be a good end product like just find somebody new like make a new fucking movie but again i can imagine what what my thoughts would be if i if i look and see how much money that's projected to make even if it sucks like i i can't say i wouldn't pull the trigger on it you know what i'm saying if it was like i I would say no yeah, well that's, that's why we need people like you in charge. I'm for sale. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm a purist. Here, yeah. here, here's the thing. When, when, when you're taking a, an animated anything, whether it's, it's, it's a, like a Japanese anime or, and you're trying to bring it to today's world, and I get it, nostalgia sells. Yeah. I mean, it's people who grew up with that. Now they got money. They got kids. Yeah. They want to introduce it to the new generation. I get the sentiment. Yeah, I saw well, the Mario well, movie yesterday. <laughs> don't tell me. I hope that's good. It's all right. I, I heard it was great, but I got to take my son because he loves Mario. Yeah. But, like, I get the appeal, you know, and I get the cash. I get the, the money that's right there. Yeah. But th- I think there's a way to execute it that that should be considered and be looked at and be like, hey, man, uh, if you're going to do Aladdin, and you trying to re- not replicate, but b- at least be on the same level as a Robin Williams, as the genie. Don't get Will Smith. Yeah. <laughs> don't fucking get Will yeah. Smith. Like it, it, it just doesn't add it's up. It's not even prime Will Smith. Like Robin Williams was on fire when he did Aladdin. No, he they like, made they they actually designed the genie character around, around Robin. Aladdin, yeah, we did a whole episode of of, of my podcast about uh, when. Um, 
Robin Williams agreed to do it because like the genie character touched his heart and he was like, yeah. as good as my heart, I'll do it. And he says, Michael Eisner, you got to promise me one thing. Is what he goes, don't commercialize genie. And they were like, we won't <laughs> like immediately <laughs> it, like betrayed his trust that's why he didn't come back for the second one it was dan castellanetta homer oh uh, really in the return of jafar return of jafar but, yeah. yeah but yeah th- but yeah this thing is like will smith you get will smith now it's like will smith was like funny in his movies back in the day like you know welcome to earth and fucking like you know he had great one-liners in his movies but he's not like a super funny guy you know no yeah it, 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 <laughs> i mean this is this is the level of improv because they they basically like all the the voices and the characters that that the genie had in the first one, yeah. it's just Robin Williams just off the top of this. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. the whole video about it on YouTube. Yeah, it's great. And you want to ask Will Smith to do that? Yeah. No, <laughs> but because you, you're you're you've established that here's a kind of out of whack character, very spontaneous, very not that calculated, yeah. entertaining in the moment. Right, it's just a series of boom, 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 boom. Like think about it, like joke, 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 yeah, joke, yeah. and hitting every single time, which is what Robin did. Yeah. And now you're gonna get somebody who's gonna rap. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I just don't. I, so I'm like, okay, you're now you're just doing it because it's it's money. Yeah. The when they when they pitched the Lion King, the Lion King remake, and, and, and I'm like, okay, first of all, dope cast. Yeah. Right. Except for John, uh, John Oliver is the only white guy on yeah, yeah, it. I'm yeah. like, yes, this is good. Go black people. I was excited. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yes, yes. Donald Glover, Beyonce. Yeah. Fuck yeah. I'm with it. I'm with it. James Earl Jones as yep. Mufasa. Dope. And then you watch it and you go. We can't tell the lions are talking. Yeah, that's right. That's what I heard. Yeah, because no. Yeah, yeah. So somebody actually took it took it upon themselves. They they they, they kind of reanimated it, yeah, to make it look more cartoony, but still in three D. Yeah, to where like you can tell the difference between uh, Simba and Mufasa. Yeah, uh, but they just took lions, they just yeah. animated lions. It is they, they, they it doesn't it looks it look weird. Yeah, I I saw a meme just about the other day where it was like. Um, Simba's face when uh, when Mufasa dies in the animated one, and he's uh-huh. like, you know, he's yeah, like, yeah. You know, he's, 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 there's an emotion there, right? And they were like, man, Simba, the, Simba in the live action didn't give a shit. His dad died. He was just like, yeah, I'm yeah, a lion. Yeah, yeah. the fuck, you want me? Yeah. I don't well, have yeah. facial expressions. That's, yeah, that's not how they do it. Yeah, <laughs> that's, 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 dumb. that's our thing. Like we we do faces. Yeah, it's it's so dumb. And again, it gets that thing of, like nobody asked for this. Like we didn't. No, we didn't need this. But that was the one. Like I thought would be cool because like lo- the lines might look cool. But it turns out they fucking didn't. You know? <laughs> like, but then like the the Dumbo one. Like there's so many parts of Dumbo you just gotta cut out. You <laughs> know, like you can't. I, even... Look, man, it's they, they have so many coming up coming up yeah so many like there's the uh pinocchio uh, i heard that guillermo del turbo del termo guillermo, <laughs> guillermo del terminator uh del terminator. <laughs> guillermo, guillermo del termo uh his um uh fucking his pinocchio i heard was dope and i watched like 15 minutes of it and it had like a lot of elements of catholic shame and i was like that's a bold direction <laughs> that's that's what i want but yeah that's well aren't, aren't a lot of things coming up um public domain now and like there's gonna be all these like like i know there's like a fucked up winnie the pooh movie coming out yeah but this is this is a horror thing it has nothing to do with disney yeah they probably have to pay something yeah but there's gonna be oh there's lion king 2 in production fuck there's a snow white coming up there's a lilo and stitch in pre-production the hunchback of Notre dame do you know how yeah. Th- that's that's a brutal one. Yeah, that is a brutal one. Yeah, and if you don't get a crippled motherfucker yeah, yeah, with a hunchback yeah. on their back, if you go grab Colin Farrell yeah. and you turn him into Quasimodo, we're going to have problems. Uh, Sword in the Stone. Sword of the Jesus. Christ. Hercules is coming. Is he was funny? Is Hercules, especially Hercules and Lilo and Stitch, especially those like that came out when I was in high school. Like I, I, I mean, I saw it, but it was like I wasn't, you know, I wasn't a kid watching Disney movies anymore. So Lilo and Stitch, even though it was 20 years ago, still seems like newer to me. And I'm like, do we need a live action remake? Of like, it's just like a weird thing where it's like, that's not even that old of a movie. Also, is Lilo and Stitch beloved like that? I don't know, but again, yeah. money's there. Yeah, yeah, money. Yeah. Look, if if they did, if they took Encanto and turned into a yeah. movie with a bunch of Mexicans <laughs> and George Lopez is the head, <laughs> do it, <laughs> fucking do it. Uh, yeah. Robin Hood, uh, Cruella. That was a Cruella one. Moana and The Rock is gonna play. Oh, uh, word. 
dude, the dis the Disney um the the Robin Hood Disney where they were all like animals. That's one of my favorite animated movies of all time. Which one? The Robin Hood uh, Disney one where they're foxes and shit like that. That's like, coming up too. Yeah, they're gonna see. I, I mean, I guess it's one of those things where I'm like, I feel no matter how good they make it look, that first one's always gonna be better because it was just so cool. They had like, oh, uh, you know, little like little foxes. I love how all the animals like really fit what they were supposed to do. Exactly, yeah. and, and the animation is is like it's it's good. I mean, this yeah. came out in the '70s. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. What are you talking about? So there's Aladdin two coming out, by the way. Jesus Christ! So we do genie back again. I, th- I mean, it's a Return of Jafar. Yeah, I guess. And it's Return of Jafar was straight to VHS. That's not even a beloved movie. Oh, they all did. The yeah. second one. Yeah, the second one was always yeah, was straight always to straight, straight to VHS. I remember like being baffled like that as a kid, and now that I understand like marketing and just like, just like that. But I was as a kid, I was just like, really a, a video like nobody wants to see Return of Jafar in theaters. Like, because as a kid, I'm like Aladdin was like one of my favorite movies. No, nah, yeah, to me, it's uh, <laughs> Aladdin and uh, the Lion King. Those are the yeah. two you don't fucking touch. Yeah, yeah, and. and even Jungle Book. Have you seen the Jungle Book one? The remake? No, I haven't. Yo, I love Jungle Book. So the first one, um, well, the, the animated one, there's only one human in the whole thing. It's Mowgli. Yeah. So that kid acted around nothing. Oh, shit. Because everything was animated. Yeah. Right? And it was dark. Yeah. Like fucking Louie. The orangutan, yeah, like yeah. you know, th- the thing is, like the in in the in the cartoon, Louis has a song, "I want to be like you." Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. very funny and all that stuff. Yeah, Louis in this one is played by, oh fuck, Christopher Walken's, <laughs> and <laughs> Christopher Walken. What? Christopher Walken is Louis Mowgli. And, you got you uh, got it all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like that. No, no, no. But he's fucking twenty feet tall. He, oh, I did see that. And, and yeah. he breaks, he like, he, he, he like breaks the whole building. Because yeah. he's so big. And I'm like, come on, Louis used to dance with Mowgli. Yeah, yeah. That's not even, the, it's like at this point, like you call it a remix. It's like, that's not a, re- that, I mean, I guess it's like a re envision, but it's like, I don't know. I feel like, is it, make another movie. Make a movie about a giant. Never mind, they already did that. Uh, okay. <laughs> As it came out of my mouth, I was like, make a movie about a giant monkey. Oh, I was like, <laughs> there's, there's a meme going around. Uh, I saw the other day. It's like, all right, so you're going to make The Little Mermaid black. All right, dope. Uh, what are you going to do about Tarzan? You're going to make him black too? <laughs> 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 I think Disney is just tone deaf enough to miss the mark on that. They're like, guys, don't worry. Tarzan's black. And it's like, nobody nobody asked for that. <laughs> you are causing a lot more problems. Okay, a, uh, a black guy runs around monkeys, <laughs> you know, can't speak, yeah. has no manners, <laughs> throws shit at you. Like, does, do you really want that, that yeah. smoke yeah, yeah, from yeah, black Twitter? Yeah, do you really want that smoke? Yeah. yeah not, you're not ready. The, the one that I enjoyed, I think, would be kind of nice because it, it fits a... Um, uh, Princess and the Frog, the one Word. that's in New Orleans, because yeah, there's a yeah, whole yeah. New Orleans culture around it, and yeah. the bad guy is the black dude with the skull face. Yeah, I, I remember that. that was like so. By the time that was out, like I was, I was out on Disney movies. Oh, me too. Me yeah, too. Uh, but my uh, my ex had two kids. That was like my reintroduce a lot of them. But I haven't seen Princess and the Frog yet. Yeah, it, it, I, I thought it was pretty well. But what I love, and I think they should bring back, is I mean everybody watched the Disney movies because the songs. Yeah, like a friend like me. Or yeah. can you feel the love tonight? Like those are songs you're like, yeah, like this is what it's about. Yeah. But when you turn that into live action, it, it it's weird. Yeah, it it, it, it doesn't because we don't do show tunes no more no, in movies. Yeah, yeah. It's not the eighties no more. People start singing out of nowhere yeah. for no reason. <laughs> we don't do those. Like there's a reason why yeah, you're singing. I expect that out of a cartoon. I'll be like, yeah, they're a cartoon. They start singing. They're they're tunes. But yeah, just like. Bell just walking through the French town, telling the whole town how they suck and she's smart. You know, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. You're whack. You're gay. You're all boring <laughs> as hell. Like, like, just like, like that. Like, it just doesn't come across that well. I guess what I'm is like, why? If you're gonna, if, if you're gonna remake it, maybe remake the animation. Maybe like, but like again, I just don't. I don't see the appeal of putting live action into it at all. And I, and I other think, than money. No. Yeah, other than money. And I think on mass audiences feel the same way, but. What I always have to remind myself of shit like this is like it's not technically made for me. It's made for kids, so I wonder how they react to it. But I, if, like, if I was a kid, I would imagine I'd want to see the cartoon version. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. You <laughs> know what? I, I look. I have. I had a policy. I tried to hold on as long as I could with my son. I was like, look, forget all these these three D cartoons. Yeah. I'm talking about Paw Patrol, fucking P- uh, PJ Mask, and. Let's go back to 2D shit. Yeah. Let me show you let me show you the Looney Tunes. Let me show yeah, you something yeah. like Hanna Barbera. Yeah. Let yeah. me show you like Bluey's the one that's blowing up now because it's just 2D. It's like yeah. somebody drew this shit. Yeah, you know what man. I mean? 
I think the CGI cartoons is just lazy. Yeah, yeah, it really honestly, like I, I completely, I, I get that because my, my, when I, my, my, my ex had two kids, I'd watch a lot of their stuff, mm -hmm. and yeah, the stuff that was like, that uh, yeah, really resonated them. It was you know also because like on a TV budget, you're not gonna make that 3D dog look that good, you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like just get some animators, man. Yeah, hire Japanese people. I don't yeah, care. Yeah, just yeah, fucking, yeah. just do it. <laughs> just do it right. But there's no need for the. We're just gonna check boxes. Yeah. That's the part that always annoys me, where they. And also, yeah, come up with new stories. Yeah. Come up with new stories. Like, you don't have, not everything does, that needs a remix. Not every song yeah. needs a remix. <laughs> not every movie needs a remake. It, it's just, uh, that's why I'm glad when the movie, like, Everywhere, Everywhere, Once, whatever. Yeah. Like, I appreciate that so yeah, much. Just a new story. Yeah. And it, it's so weird that, like, like the, the, the back in the day, like, all, most movies were that, and now it's like it's refreshing when you see one. We're like, oh, this is a new story. It's because it's it's everything is an IP, and it, it, I mean it's, it's that like it's a cliche thing. We've all noticed it, but it's true that like that came out. And that was one of the biggest coolest things about it for me. I was like, oh, this is just a movie somebody thought of. This would be good. Yep, Banshees good idea. of Sheeran was dope as shit. Yeah, uh, because that was just you know a movie some guy thought of. Um, yeah, I don't. Uh, I <laughs> this is one thing that's kind of because you, you, know, you said you have kids, uh, and I'm sure you watch some kid TV. Uh -huh. well, well, a rule of thumb I always noticed with the, the kid shows, like which ones were like actually good and educational versus not, was if they had an episode. If, if the point of every episode was just about friendship. It was usually just to sell a toy because it's the most vapid. Oh, the most it's, vapid it's, process. You know, it's always been about the toys. Yeah, like they, oh, they, for they, sure. they do not produce a a cartoon if there's no toy line behind it. Yeah. G.I. Joe, Barbie, uh, fucking Ninja Turtles. Yeah. All of the, even in the 80s. The, Dude, the, I mean, I was a kid. I remember when fucking. The, I found out. When, I didn't even know what Ninja Turtles was. And then, like, my friend my friend came home from the toy store with a Ninja Turtle. And I was like, I don't know what that is, but I need all of it. <laughs> like, yeah, that's that's I, what it is. Transformers, I, I, yeah. all of that. Yeah, oh, it's all that's toy all commercials. Well, so my, my ex, her kids would watch a lot of PBS kids stuff because uh, uh, no cable at the old crib. But <laughs> so, like, a lot of PBS kids going on there. But. I would watch that and like Arthur's like talking about like socioeconomic issues and like the fallout from Hurricane Sandy, like heavy shit. Arthur goes in and uh, but then she would watch a couple other shows where it'd be like, this is clearly like Bubble Guppies comes to mind. And oh, I watched that. Yeah. The reason I can tell like Bubble Guppies didn't really teach kids shit was because it was the end of every episode was, hey, that person's bad. It's because they have no friends. Now we're their friends with them. And now that person's good. And that's the lesson. Go buy some <laughs> toys, kids. People with no friends are bad people. You know, like, like, that's how Bubble Guppies is. Yeah. And it was like, but then you, like, that, that's how it always pointed out. It was like, you know, like smoke out watch. I'm like, oh, this is one of those. Bullshit kid shows because that's the only moral. Oh, th th there's one. My, my son loves uh, Blaze and the Monster Machine. You ever heard of uh, that uh, one? No, it's it's a car that turns into all kinds of shit. I like and, that. But they also teach about physics. Yeah, it's, yeah okay. I do think I remember that. And one. they're like, oh, this is acceleration. This is, the, yeah, this that's is cool. speed. That's this is weight. And this is, it's, it's literally about physics, but it's always the same. At the end, he does, you know, I don't, I don't know how it is in English because I only watch it in French. Um, like super speed or whatever, and then yeah. he wins, and someone always try to cheat. It's, 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 but I'm like, you could watch Wacky Races. Yeah, the same thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's what I took away from Wacky Races was physics. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you know the boulder is going to is going to land on the dude uh, yeah, dastardly. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's new a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we have a boulder here now. The PSI, it's gonna be, <laughs> it's gonna make steam shoot out of Duke Dastard's these ears. Yeah. But, oh man, no, but uh, so to go back to the, to the Disney thing. Oh yes, yeah, so I tried. No, no, no. That's fine. This is what it's about. Yeah. Like we start there, then we go wherever. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I think that knowing all the ones that are in in the pipeline, it 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 comes down to. Yes, I get the money, but it's. I think it's time to for the new generation to get new stories. Yeah. Like we were lucky to grow up in the you know nineties, eighties, nineties, even two thousand for some of them. Let me talk, a lot of them. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, Some yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah. No, everybody made, else died. Don't I made it through most of them. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. After that, I just, I just hung it up. I'm, I was done. Um, but be like, I have their generation tell their story. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if if you're writing for uh, for a TV show, and you can find a topic that can resonate with the kids, and given all of today's, 
you know, rules or codes or whatever yeah. you want to call it, because we didn't give a fuck back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it was just, that dude, dude just, yeah. hey, here's content. Yeah, And yeah. the dude, get cut, the head get cut off. Just, yeah, yeah. You live with it. You live through it. You're going, <laughs> you're, you're six. You know what's up. Yeah. I mean, you'll be fine. You'll grow up to be a well-adjusted adult in the 2000s. You'll be fine. Y2K was not a bug. It's okay. You're yeah, going to live. Yeah. Um, so have them tell their stories. Yeah, I saw the other day I watched Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. And uh, it was like largely like young, like Gen Z cast. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's got Pete Davidson, and, uh, but like, you know, he's probably the oldest person on set. <laughs> and, yeah. But it was like, I was watching it and at and it, it kind of duped me. I, I like, I got like whatever, you know, the little trick to try to pull the audience got me in the sense that I'm watching, I don't even see Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. No, no, I heard of it. Yeah, yeah. it's like a, a, a murder mystery. the moment mystery. he got tattoos. Yeah, yeah, Pete Davidson from yeah. SNL. Yeah, he's, it's a murder mystery. Like, they, it's a bunch of young, like, 20 somethings having a hurricane party, and people start winding up dead one by one. Mm-hmm. And, like, I watched this, and I was just, at first, I was like, these are the most useless people. Like, they have these, all, all these kids have zero skills. Like, there's a part where they get down to the car, and the car is a stick shift. You know, I can't drive a stick shift, I can't talk shit. But, like, they have they they read every situation wrong, they on what, purpose. No, on purpose. Like they're just like you, the characters have no world experience. Oh, they have no world experience. They have no like you know, like like I think your know, Generation Z kind of grew up in an area they didn't have. There's not a monoculture. Like you could right, if you grew up right, on the right, internet, right, you could right. just pay attention to your hyper specific shit and and be like, oh, what? There's a mountain in North Dakota that has president's faces on it. You know, just like not know about like larger culture at large, mm-hmm. and that's kind of like the the reflection of that. In these characters, and then they flip it. It turns out it's it's intentional. Like these kids are all just. It, it starts to realize it at the end. But you're like, you're watching it. Like all your worst fears about Gen Z confirmed. It's like, there's a killer in the house. They can't drive a stick. There's one older guy that's hanging out there. They mistakenly kill him because the lady was like, "Well, he seemed violent. You said he was a vet, like in Iraq." She's like, "No, he's a fucking veterinarian assistant." Like, it's just all these, <laughs> like, yeah, just and you're like, oh, these guys have no clue about the larger world outside of their like twenty something circle, and then like it. Flips Flips it at the end, and that's realize that's what's been going on the whole time. And you're like, oh, this is Gen Z. I hope it was Gen Z writer, but sound like an idiot. But it's like this is Gen Z bouncing the, the fears and projections they have about themselves off of themselves and telling their story in a way that helps them work through it. And it was really good. I fucking loved it by the end. It's not fucking cinema, but it was like clearly <laughs> it's yeah, yeah, cinema. <laughs> it's not cinema. I mean, yeah, but like, it's clearly it was like this is like a movie that that kind of uh, builds upon all the fears people have about this next generation that they're that they're just worthless and it shows that like at one point they're wondering who killed who and she's like well you did it because you're a narcissist she's like i am not a narcissist that is toxic and she's like look the reason i killed her is because my mom has borderline <laughs> like, oh my god <laughs> and, like, it becomes, i can't sit through that it, you know, it becomes intentional self-parody like it's definitely they're, they're turning it on its head and they're like showing like oh, look at all these like this is the fears we have about the generation is that they're just stupid and every one of those self absorbed and self absorbed and every one of those characters lives up to it perfectly and I imagine it was a younger writer who was like I'm gonna process the concerns my generation has about are we even competent people and do it through a slasher flick and it was pretty fucking cool so if if, if it works if it works for them that's fine the real the true test is if you fast forward twenty years from now and you do bodies 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 yeah. <laughs> And now the world is different, and now yeah. they're like, "Oh my God, there's robots every, everywhere!" Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now they have to like live with it, and then live with their insecurities, and yeah. kind of and make it work. Yeah, like so that would the be test the test. Time, yeah. So what I'm saying is, just leave the generational, like the put it this way, any movie that defines the generation. You hear that a lot. Yeah, like a like a Top Gun or Footloose. Yeah. Yep. Or, uh, you know, Coming to America or uh, Casablanca, Godfather. Yeah. Like, leave that. That defined that that era. Yeah, right? yeah. Even if it's a story told of a different era, it doesn't matter. But there was a reason why they chose to, uh, to write it, to produce it, and yeah. release it at that time. And it marked that time. Yeah. And then we move on to the next time. That, yeah, so whatever people are like, are, are like... Uh, I, 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 before I started doing comedy full time, I was working construction. Mm-hmm. And a lot of construction guys thought it was cool as shit that I did comedy. And they wanted to talk about it. And they, they were, they were those guys who were like, "So you, you're, you're like censored now, huh?" And I'm like, "Nah, that's not really real, you know." Like, at least in my experience. And so, we were talking about it, and I, they always said the same line was, uh, "You couldn't make Blazing Saddles today." And well, I'm like, "Yeah, that's and true. Like, yeah, you, yeah, you couldn't because they made Blazing Saddles in fucking 1979. It was a different place. You could do that." And nobody cared. Now people do care. So why make that movie? 
And then a funny flip on that, I saw somebody, a comedian one time that was like, yeah, somebody said you can't make Blazing Saddles today. And I was like, yeah, because I'd look at the script and go, that's Blazing Saddles. Mel, B- <laughs> Mel Brooks made this in 1979. <laughs> we can't make that today. No, <laughs> and, and, and just leave it alone. Yeah, just leave it alone. Leave it alone. Don't, yeah. Meanwhile, like you can make offensive, raunchy comedies. It's just like, if you're out there, if you're going to include a bunch of shit where you know that's a hot button issue, that's going to piss people off, and you don't handle it well, you're going to piss people off. Like, if you don't handle it, if you don't, you know, take the necessary steps to make the humor hit and do your thing, it's not going to pay off. And it's like, well, that's the social circle, the social climate, climate we live in now. Mm-hmm. So if you can't make a movie in this climate, unless you're going to invent a fucking time machine, <laughs> like, it sounds like you're not cut out to be a filmmaker today. Like, no, ex- exactly. But, but come up with original ideas. I yeah. remember when there was one movie, uh, what was the old school? Oh, yeah. I yeah, think yeah, old school. Yeah, yeah. Old school. Great movie, uh, you know, especially I'm t- talking about just in terms of the the the, the comedy, the yeah. comedy, the comedy of it, uh, that that whole camp where his dad is putting crashers, yeah, all yeah, that, that yeah, whole yeah. that whole circle, right? And uh, uh, super bad, like that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, I, d- I mean, super bad was like that was a big one for me because I was like, it was almost like that was my current sense of type of sense of humor yeah. at that time, and it was like it just it just like again cultural of the moment, it hit it, and I was like, oh dude. This- yeah, super. So you can remember, it. like, like American Pie is another one. Yeah, like yeah. defining like a yeah. like an era defining movie, and you like just tell the story of your time. Be creative with it. You yeah. can inspire, you get inspired by like stuff that that that's been out, but don't try to remake it. And the thing is, I don't think they would do it if people our generation was not like. Oh yeah, uh, let me tell you about this one about Back to the Future. Uh, you need to see that, but somebody's already making a new one, so he's gonna watch that one. Because if I show you the old one, you won't know what the fuck happened. Because the dude really, basically, his mom fell in love with his with, yeah, with her yeah, son, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you have to explain that. Yeah, I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna try to explain that. Yeah, Let, let's watch the Back yeah, to the Future yeah. Seven. That's coming out next month. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I, I I I get it, but it, it's it's uh, I think it's a constant battle of, you know, how creative and how how much how much you consider the art form of making movies as opposed to, hey man, I'm just trying to make a billion dollars to get the fuck out. Yeah. Or I'm trying to milk the shit out of it over the next, you know, the next three four years, you know, eleven years when it comes yeah. Fast and Furious, <laughs> or you know, like Marvel. And it will just uh, um, oh shit yeah you got to go soon. Uh, Marvel is also like milking it, but Marvel actually has a purpose. Yeah, yeah, th- that's that, different. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big Marvel guy. I fucking love them. Even the, like you know it's one of those things again where like like if they slap that sticker on it and they say that it has something to do with the overall continuity of the, of the universe, it's like well I will buy a ticket and I will do that until I'm physically enabled. To no, do but it. It, it yeah it, it works. But one because it's executed well. Yeah, they're not trying too hard. Yeah, like the 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 superhero trope has been done and overdone and overdone. We know that, but it's not about that anymore. Yeah, it's not about a dude that just came out of nowhere and all of a sudden he's a superhero. So you have to he has responsibilities now. Yeah, and he got to learn how to use his powers and blah blah yeah, blah. Yeah. And and then you know he breaks up with his wife or and then at one point he has a realization that he has to do something otherwise the whole world goes to shit and his family dies with it. Yeah, fine, <laughs> we get it. Yeah, we get it. But it fits in a bigger narrative that we can all appreciate. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I get down on a man. Yeah, but I could imagine like there's obviously there's origin stories still in the Marvel universe, but they because they they already got the engine going. Right, it doesn't feel like an origin story. It's so much as like you're like it, it doesn't. I don't think I can stand to watch another superhero movie where it's like just the origin. That's why like when they oh. now, they're coming out like every movie that comes out now, like you know the Batman, the new Spider Man's. There's not really the origins. Like it's already happening or it happened in the background. They've told it enough. Yeah, I got bit. Like we all know. Like you know we don't need that. And so yeah, I like that. Marvel, even if they introduce a new character into this into the series, they've already done the work to where it's like I don't need to like have my my perception bended so I can believe this guy can shoot lasers out of his eyes because it takes place in a universe where it's well established that that can happen. You know, <laughs> have you seen the DC the trailer for the Blue Beetle? I haven't yet. With I've seen, George I've seen Lopez. The it's, it's a Mexican superhero. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the whole, no, don't get me wrong. Good for them. Yeah, but yeah. I'm like, really, DC? You can. There's nobody else. Yeah. <laughs> How about another Green Lantern? Yeah. How about a, like another fucking I've, no Fantastic Four is Mar- no it's Marvel. That's Marvel. Yeah. Oh fuck. See, I can't even name a lot of DC shit. Yeah. That's how also, bad. Like, that's how bad they are. Yeah, movies. yeah. Yeah. I never like like I like the standalone DC shit like your Batman and stuff like that. Those are all tight. But so far their attempts at like universe building I liked Peacemaker. 
Peacemaker was really good. Uh huh. Um, and the, the James Gunn Suicide Squad was dope. Oh yeah, uh, that was good. That was yeah. Other than that, I really haven't like like I've I've seen Batman versus Superman. Like I just I, I kind of really couldn't care less. I was like, no, but you know, you know the math they had to do. They're like, we need we need we need a a Latin next superhero. Yeah. All right, who's 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 Mexican <laughs> in our <laughs> roster? <laughs> Oh, the Blue Beetle right down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get Blue Beetle. <laughs> All right. Nobody knows about him. And, yeah. then, and now it's like, yeah, we'll be able to sell more comic books of Blue Beetle. Yeah. Like, sure, but nobody knew about him. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. We'll do it anyway. Yeah, yeah. You're, get, you're throwing out, like, you know, like, like you're not you're not giving away, like, the top domain property. You're, you're, you're taking a risk on, like, your lower your, you could your lower do, set of IP. You could do a dope Flash movie. Yeah. Fuck the series. You yeah, do yeah. a dope Flash movie. I don't even watch the series. I remember yeah. Flash from the 90s, the TV series. Anyway. DC in general, even as a kid, like, I liked, again, I, I liked Batman a lot. Yeah, Batman. Uh, that was dope. But then, like, when I, it was when I found out that Marvel, like, like obviously all the, the comic book universes are interconnected, but Marvel, like, even in the comic stage, really leaned into that. It's mm-hmm. like, hey, you can be reading a comic. You don't know who's going to show up. Fucking Johnny Torch might make a car, or Johnny Flame might make a car for Spider-Man or whatever, you know? Right. And like, all this shit could happen, and I liked the, this, the internet connectivity of it. Like blew my mind as a kid. I loved that, mm-hmm. and I and I never really got around to giving a shit about the DC universe outside of Batman. No, nobody does. Yeah, <laughs> nobody yeah, fucking yeah, does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, There's I, money there, they, they, but they have to print it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, we're gonna wrap things up, Pat. Uh, where can people find you? All that good stuff. So I am on uh, Twitter and Instagram is at PZ Texas P E E Z Y T X. Uh, also, I have a podcast called Lie, Cheat, and Steal. Uh, it's about scam artists. I host it with Kath Barbadoro. That's available wherever podcasts are listened to, and you can find our Patreon at patreon.com slash lie, cheat, and steal. Sweet. And uh, you got any shows coming up? Any? Uh, yeah, man. Are we doing FBIA or no? Uh, is that this month? I think the sign-up is coming up soon. Okay. Just I, do I, it I, in I, the summer. I, I sat it out last year, but uh, I'm going to do it this year. But, yeah, I'll do that. But I have... Um, Let's see what's the, what's the big one. Oh, I should have had all these. Like, I've been telling myself how I should fucking get all my show dates together this Nobody's month. Nobody's listening. Nobody. People tune out as, as yeah, soon as yeah, we yeah, said, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. "Fuck Fast and Furious, they're out." Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and, and just say, uh, check on my Instagram, my Twitter. I'll have yeah, to that's up. the best yeah. way to do it. Yes. So follow Pat. Go see him on stage. Very very funny. Uh, on my end, make sure you follow at Record Play Live on Instagram. Follow the feedback as well. Uh, I have some dates coming up. Uh, I'll just follow me. You'll 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 find me. Come see yeah. me. Uh, thank you so much, Pat. I really appreciate it. Yeah, dude, I had a fucking blast. Like, I'm, I'm glad I ran into you at Sunset because I was like, cause honestly, I hadn't seen you in a long time. Yeah, we bumped each other at the Vell. The time was the first time, like I said, we yeah. ever actually talked, and that's how it goes in comedy. Like people hear those stories, they're like, what, they just not talk to each other. It's like, no, there's a lot of comedians. <laughs> like you don't get around to talking to everybody. No, but th- again, th- this is what I try to do on this podcast. It's like. I, I I think there's more to comedians than just telling jokes. Everybody got interest. Everybody got yeah. shit they want to say. They want to talk about. Um, and so, you know, trying to get to know them. That way it gives you another angle when you go see them on stage. And then, should if c- come talk to <laughs> talk to Pat about Lord of the Rings yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and the yeah. Marvel Universe. Yeah, yeah, have yeah. A conversation. How much time do you have? I will, yeah, I will talk an ear off about exactly, that. Exactly, exactly. All right, thank well, you so much it. for tuning in. Appreciate you, Pat. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for doing this, man. We'll, I appreciate it. We'll talk to you next time. Ciao, ciao.